glad you're back at NatFL, where we keep up with the latest, top news about the Miami Dolphins. Updates Miami Dolphins staff on fourth day at 2021 Senior Bowl. Dolphins' Tay Mike Jasicki garnered Pro Bowl consideration. Brian Flores on his way to become the great coach of the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins' offensive coordinator candidate rumored to be on way to Houston. Miami Dade State of the County address pray for Miami Dolphins. Let's subscribe, Dolphins believers. We also have a date at 1 p.m. today for Tua's deadly silence. Senior Bowl Day 4 Update Fans got another look at head coach Brian Flores and his staff coaching up the national team in Mobile, Alabama. Throughout Friday's practice at Hancock Whitney Stadium, defensive backs coach Gerald Alexander, linebackers coach Anthony Campanile and offensive line coach Lemuel Jean-Pierre provided fans with an inside look at the coach-to-player communication. Technique, communication and fundamentals were prominent talking points during the two-hour ESPNU broadcast. After practice, Flores met with ESPN's Quint Kelly told the Dolphins head coach that his staff provided the network with an entertaining day of coverage. We've got a great staff, Flores said. They did a great job this week. They work hard and I'm fortunate to be around a lot of great people. Throughout the 2020 season, Flores and his staff harped on daily improvement, something he says he saw through three days of senior bowl practices. We've seen them improve really every day. We talked to them about their goals for the week and improving is something we want to see as coaches and personnel people and we saw that this week for sure, Flores said. Kesenik asked Flores about the running back group of the national team, specifically North Carolina's Michael Carter, Oklahoma's Ramondre Stevenson and Virginia Tech's Khalil Herbert. I think all three of those guys had good weeks, Flores said. They're all a little bit different but they all have good skill sets. Stevenson is a big back with good vision. Carter's got real good quickness and balance. Herb is the same. All three of them have good hands and catch the ball out of the backfield. The passion and energy on the practice field isn't exclusive to the coaches directing the drills. Flores commented on the desire and love of the game from the national team. We've got a lot of guys here who love to play football, Flores said. Jim Nagy and the Senior Bowl staff brought in some really talented players. Not only that but guys who enjoy the game, who are passionate about the game and it's not about all the other fluff as I call it, they really just enjoy it. If no one was watching, they'd still be playing. Dolphins linebacker Jerome Baker, a former Ohio State Buckeye, was particularly fond of defensive coordinator Josh Boyer coaching up a fellow Buckeye in linebacker Tuff Borland. Tight end Mike Jasicki garnered Pro Bowl consideration with a career year totaling 53 receptions for 703 receiving yards and six touchdowns. Jasicki shared a highlight reel from 20 tight reel from 2020, his third year as a pro. Brian Flores on his way to become the great coach of the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins' hiring of Brian Flores in 2018 may have changed the way teams pursued culture when hiring new head coaches. If you ask Miami Dolphins fans in 2021 one word to describe head coach Brian Flores, you might get a unanimous answer. What is it? Flores not only a coach, 100%. In second seasons Flores, and obviously Chris Greer, has been able to completely change the fortunes of this franchise and give fans hope. Something the team has not had since the golden boy Dan Marino called it quits. More importantly, Flores hiring in 2018 not only took the Dolphins in a new direction, but it laid the foundation for what teams are looking for in a head coach in 2021. The 2021 head coaching hiring cycle featured guys like New York Jets' Robert Sala and Detroit Lions' Dan Campbell. Both of them had one great similarity, which was their ability to rally players and be a leader. When approaching the idea of a coaching change, teams mainly consider two things. How can a coach impact the locker room, and how can he impact the product on the field? When the Dolphins hired Flores, fans looked at previous New England Patriots assistants turned head coaches and the results were not promising. Heading into year one at the helm for the Dolphins, the team seemed in stock for a long rebuild after an 0-7 and seven start, but the team would end up winning five of their last nine games to end the year at 5-11. and 11. This would all culminate into a 10-win season, while also owning the third overall pick thanks to Flores and Greer wanting to have players who fit their plan. 
Now how this impacts this year's coaching cycle. Every team wants to have a coach that the players will play for, no matter the situation or outcome. Salah and Campbell have been praised by players they have coached for being leaders of men. The two will all difficult rebuilds on the horizon, but so was Flores. If teams are fortunate to have a patient owner, they could see immense growth just like Flores has with the Dolphins. What do you think about Flores in 2020 season? Dolphins OC candidate rumored to be on way to Houston. On the heels of Miami's 2020 season, the Dolphins face a critical task, find the right coach to call plays and build structure around a young quarterback in Tua Tungavailoa. Of the six possible candidates, the Dolphins have just two remaining, the two assistant coaches already under contract with the team. The final known external candidate, former Chargers QB coach Pep Hamilton, will be taking a job in Houston according to reports last night, ending a waiting game that stretched for weeks. Miami probably likes what they saw this week from Eric Studsville or George Godsey and with Miami edging closer to making a decision between their internal candidates, Hamilton was spurred into action to take an assistant gig knowing he would not be getting the job in Miami. Hamilton had also interviewed in Pittsburgh for their offensive coordinator vacancy but ultimately did not generate the momentum needed to secure a play caller's role. For the Dolphins, it certainly seems as though this was a decision the team made. You don't miss out on a candidate if you interview him two weeks back and never offer him the position. That's the good news for Miami. Even better news for all involved? We're reaching the end of the road, here. The Dolphins are getting close to having to make a decision, mercifully. And with the final stretch of their bonus evaluation window coming to a close tomorrow in Mobile, Alabama, we may see some prompt action on who will be the offensive coordinator by early next week. Or who knows? Maybe even then we won't get an answer. Miami-Dade State of the County Address Pray for Miami Dolphins. Football fandom will bring fans of just about every team a little bit of everything, joy, despair, anxiety, you name it. And how each fan chooses to handle those roller coaster of emotions? Well, that's up to them. Some laugh. Some cry. Some even pray. And that's exactly what we got this morning from the Miami-Dade State of the County Address this morning. Everyone who follows the Miami Dolphins knows the gravity of the situation this offseason. With Miami entering into year three of the Chris Greer regime, the Dolphins are entering into a critical window. The coming months could help determine whether or not Miami successfully transcends the plateau of mediocrity they've been suck in for the last 15 to 20 years or if Miami is doomed to fall into a familiar pattern of being stuck in the middle of the pack in the AFC. With so much of the conference landscape changing, the opportunity is ripe for the Dolphins to strike and to strike and make big changes and hopefully be a postseason contender. But it all starts with the ability to string together good choices on the personnel front. Perhaps that's why an unofficial prayer for the Miami Dolphins draft board, of all things, went viral this morning as the Miami-Dade state of the county address got underway. Indeed, the Dolphins do need a good draft. They're well positioned to have one, two. In the end, if the Dolphins crush their draft class and find themselves still playing around this time next year, we'll all know who to thank. Chris Greer, Brian Flores, the Dolphins scouting department, the players themselves and maybe even Miami-Dade County for a little extra good juju going into the 2021 offseason.